So what happens when you combine JRE's frequencies with Dutch colonial architecture? This is Jakarta Kota, the terminus of the Bogor, Tanjung Priok, and Cikarang Lightway. What? Yes, there's one train at 5 past 4 a.m. in the morning that they pass to Cikarang. Actually, before the switchover, Cikarang line trains do stop at Jakarta Kota, which brings me to the history of this line. You see, officially this line came into existence on the 28th of May 2022, despite the infrastructure being well over 150 years old. Previously, there were two lines, being the Central and Loop lines which ran together from Bogor before splitting off in Manggarai, with one headed to Jatinegara by doing a massive loop around Central Jakarta, and the other one headed straight to Jakarta Kota. Some say, probably if you live in Bogor or Depok, that the old layout is better, while others, probably if you live in Bekasi or Cikarang, prefer the new layout, so you can go fight that out in the comments. Now back to Jakarta Kota. It used to be the central station, but as Jakarta kept growing southward because, well, you know, it became less central station and more tourist attraction. Don't get me wrong, it's still functional and there's trains leaving every 5 to 10 minutes, but it now mainly serves the old town and the benefit of that is good pedestrian infrastructure outside. Right next to the station is Kota Bus Shelter, where you can take Trans Jakarta Corridor 1 to Block M and Corridor 12 to Tanjung Priok via Sunter. If you want to go to Pluit, you gotta walk to Kali Besar Barat, and that is where those white sidewalks and plazas make things easy. Entering the stations, you see a disturbing lack of level boarding, a common theme here, and the very Japanese trains and infrastructure. 1500 volts overhead wires, 1067mm narrow gauge track, and a train taken straight from the Tokyo Rail Network with a new paint job. If you're lucky, or if you time your visit right, you will also see an intercity train. There's one intercity line that for some reason has its final stop here instead of Gambir. From Jakarta Kota, trains go up a viaduct and stay there until Manggarai. Combine that with the high frequencies, as long as no intercity trains are causing a mess of the schedule, and you get MRT Jakarta before it was cool. Each station has some kind of transit connection. Some have a couple of Angkot and Micro Trans lines like Jayakarta, Sawa Besar, and Mangga Besar, which yes means Big Mango. Cikini has a former BRT line, now non-BRT line, aka just a regular bus line, the 4C. Let's just say that some people, including myself, find that policy uh, disagreeable. And then you've got Juanda, which is directly connected to a big new shiny BRT shelter with 5 BRT lines, 1 non-BRT line, and the T12, which is um, unique for only running 2 hours a day. Juanda also has two major trip generators nearby being the Istiqlal Mosque, one of the world's largest mosques, and the Jakarta Cathedral. Also, if you're wondering where all the intercity trains go, they go to Gambir, at least for the ones using Bogor Line tracks, which the commuter line trains skip. It has nice views of Monas, and it might become a commuter line station in the future as all the intercity trains get moved to Manggarai. And then you get to the station that strikes fear into every commuter's heart. But outside of rush hour, it's actually quite a nice station. So the top floor is where the Bogor Line platforms are. There's two island platforms, so four tracks, which is necessary because some trains from Bogor stop here and turn back. The middle section has air conditioning, some beautiful wayfinding on both the ceiling and the floor, and is where you enter and exit the station. The bottom floor is literally the back rooms, and is where the Chikarang and airport train stops. Manggarai is also connected via Skybridge with Transjakarta Corridor 4, one of the best BRT lines in the system before the construction of the LRT Jakarta extension turned a good chunk of it into a glorified non-BRT line and said LRT is currently being expanded all the way here. Another Transjakarta line I would like to mention is the 6M, which connects this station to the CBDs of Kuningan, Senayan, and Block M. And it's pretty much a BRT line disguised as a non-BRT line. And it's after you pass this station that the Bogor line stops pretending to be MRT Jakarta and instead becomes a GRE line. This section of line all the way to Bogor recently had a speed upgrade and now goes 80 km per hour and with frequencies sometimes as low as 2 to 3 minutes apart. You'll think that there would be a few to no level crossings but no, there's a lot of level crossings. But they have built a lot of bridges so you can avoid these level crossings for the most part. I should also mention that while the Bogor line is frequent, the headways are somewhat irregular. Here's the schedule in Chawang station for trades headed to Bogor from 1 to 2 in the afternoon. The first train comes at 1 past 6, the next one comes in 9 minutes, the train after that comes in 11, then 7, then 9, then 9 again, then 4, and 4 minutes. Also, station spacing gets a bit wider south of Manggarai. 
while before it's about 1 to 2 kilometers, now it's 1 to 3 kilometers. Now to Tebet, a small station that's unique for having nice shelters on both sides of the station, which means yes, this station can be accessed on both sides. The western side has line 6C and 6D that goes to Kuningan, and the eastern side has line 5B which goes to Kampung Melayu one of the largest BRT shelters and is the meeting point of 5 BRT lines. Chawang Station is connected to Chikoko LRT Station and BRT Shelter, where you can connect to the Chibubur and Harja Mukti lines along with Transjakarta Corridor 9, the longest BRT line in the system and some of its branches. All of this is connected by a sky bridge, though I think they haven't completed it fully, so you do need to walk outside for a bit. It's a very short walk and there's a sidewalk, so it's still a decent transfer. In paper. You see, you need to cross a narrow street, but that street has a tunnel, so you can't see the traffic and drivers can't see you. So you can guess it probably doesn't feel all that safe. But ignoring the slight risk of getting run over for now, once the sky bridge is completed, this should be a great example of transit integration. Then you get to Durian Kalibata, a station that I've never been to, but I am here mainly to comment about land use. All the stations I've mentioned so far have high levels of population or job density surrounding it, but Durian Kalibata has this. This is Kalibata City. A massive series of apartment blocks that put Soviet architects a run for their money and is home to 13,000 people. Pasar Minggu, literally Sunday market, is a relatively large station. It has two island platforms despite only being served by one line. Recently, they have finished building a sky bridge connecting it to the market and bus terminals across the street. And yes, Jakarta does love stacking roads on, on and under each other. But ignoring that, this whole area is the meeting point of a bunch of non-BRT lines and the airport bus operated by Damri. Before we talk about the next station, I want to show you this. There are a couple of these horseshoe-shaped overpasses scattered all over South Jakarta to facilitate drivers doing U-turns, and there's a lot of people doing them because we like to block intersections for better traffic flow, effectively turning them into very elongated roundabouts. Tanjung Barat is another example of a station with particularly great land use. They're currently building an apartment on top and across the street there's Aeon Mall, a mall that we Indonesians really like judging how all Aeon Malls are always crowded. Jakarta Mall's tier list will be made soon. And behind the mall is another apartment. This station is also connected to Trans Jakarta Line D21, which is a non-BRT line disguised as a Trans Jabodetabek line. Like, the D stands for Depok and it doesn't even go there, it just stops short at Universitas Indonesia. Also, this station has the worst platform height difference, you pretty much just jump off the train. Pondok Cina is a unique station, because the last time I went there, 6 months ago so things might have changed, you need to go through an under construction apartment to get out of the station. Nearby is Universitas Indonesia and Universitas Pancasila stations, which serve some of the most prestigious universities in the country, both of which are massive trip generators. Since passing Universitas Indonesia, we have entered Depok City, which has two stations named after it. Depok Baru, literally New Depok, is located next to a bus terminal that serves Trans Jakarta Line D11, an actual Trans Jabodetabek line unlike its cousin the D21. There's also Depok Station, which is completely surrounded by houses and therefore is not really a major transit interchange, but some trains from Kota stop here before turning back. A little bit south of this station, there's a railway junction connecting the main line with the depot. Once you pass Depok, stations are spaced 4 to 8 kilometers apart. Chitayam, located within Depok City and Bogor Regency, is a small station, most notably where the Nambo branch line splits from the Bogor line. The Nambo line is a line so infrequent that I can show you the whole schedule right now. This branch line currently has two active stations. Chibinong is a station completely surrounded by houses, it has nice views of the mountains, and is one uncut line away from Chibinong City Mall. Meanwhile, Nambo Station is completely surrounded by factories. Also, Google Maps is weird. They show the Chikarang Line service to Jakarta Kota that as far as I know has one departure in the morning, but they don't show the Nambo Branch Line that despite its American commuter rail levels of frequency, runs all day. Now back to the main line. Bojong Gede is a station that's again completely surrounded by houses, so much so they need to build a sky bridge connecting the nearby Angkot Terminal to the station. And finally, the southern terminus of the Bogor Line, Bogor Station, located in Bogor City, which as far as I remember has two entrances, the southern one that looks more modern and the more Dutch colonial style eastern one, and for good reason. Although Manggarai is the busiest station in normal times, during the holidays Bogor can get very crowded, being near the mountains, Bogor and its surrounding area are full of tourist attractions. There's the Bogor Botanical Gardens, and Bogor Station itself is not completely surrounded by houses. 
there's a park right next to it. This is also a station you do not want to be when it rains because a lot of the platforms do not have weather protection. There's a sky bridge connecting it to Paledang Station, which was the former terminus of the intercity train connecting Sukabumi with Bogor with three departures per day, but to make transiting to the commuter line easier, currently this train stops in Bogor Station. Now, Bogor City has relatively good transit. It's not rapid, but it is frequent. We've got Angkots going pretty much everywhere in the city. There's also Transpakuan, which is just a regular city bus that runs less frequency than the Angkots, but also makes less stops, so it's sort of an express bus network. Network. Transpak 1 also has functional live bus tracking in the app, something that Transjakarta struggles with. Two of their lines stop in front of Bogor Station, with Corridor 5 going to Chipargi Terminal and Corridor 2 going to Chiawe, which is located near Puncak, a major tourist destination. There's also Damri buses to Block M and strangely enough Juanda via Jagorawi Toll Road and Sudirman Tamrin. Those buses are more expensive, they get stuck in traffic and only run at peak hours. But you do get to sleep in the bus, and they make stops in Sudirman Tamrin Road so it makes sense people use them since they literally stop in front of some people's offices. 